Hello everyone, I'm Kuldeep from Pingala and in today's how to video, I will guide you through migrating Informatica B2B data processor or DT code from an on-premise Informatica setup to IDMC. To start, let's briefly review our use case. Imagine your organization is using Informatica Power Center or developer on-premise and you have decided to transition to Informatica Cloud or IDMC. Your existing mappings might include UDD transformations in Power Center or data processor transformations in developer to handle unstructured or semi-structured data from various sources. This video will show how you how to easily migrate these existing codes to IDMC with minimal changes. And we will also try to process an EDI XL 855 file using Cloud B2B Gateway to create an IDOG XML leveraging the migrated data service. Let's dive into the demo. First, you need to deploy or export your DT or data processor code. I've already deployed mine and it's located into the service DV folder. Let's quickly review the contents of this folder, which include the standard CMW file, the XSDs, and the TGPs. Let's log in into the IDMC administrator service. Navigate to the IDMC data service repository. The data service repository provides pre packaged services for various industry standards such as HIPAA, Swift, Edifact, EDI X12, and others. To use your custom code, click on the new custom data service at the top right of the card. In the new custom data service, browse to the service DB folder where your code is exported and select the project. Choose general as the industry standard. Set the operation to none and select the environment relevant to your use case. For this demo, I will use development and save it. Your code will appear once the data service is successfully imported. You can filter by type to view your code. As you can see, our code has been imported into the data service repository. Now let's move on to the data integration service. I've already prepared a mapping skeleton to convert an EDIX12 XML file that, will, that we will receive from the B2B gateway into an IDOC XML file. Let's start by adding the data service transformation into the mapping. In the properties pane, click on data services and select the service that we just imported into the repository. If your DT code requires input parameters, click on the populate fields button. This will autofill the input fields with service parameters. Since we'll receive a file path reference from the B2B gateway for the EDI XML file, let's change the input type to file. Also, I'll update the status tracking to full status XML for basic error handling. Now let's link this transformation. Now let's go to the field mapping and map all the fields. I'll, I'll save this mapping. 
Now that this map is, is valid, let's move on to the B2B gateway service. I've already set up the customer with the necessary ISA fields uh, and the message type. Now let's move to the inbound screen and select the mapping we just configured. And I'll save this customer. Before triggering this profile, let me show you the input file that we are going to process. So this is the location that we have configured within the partner setup. And this is the EDI 855 file that we are trying to process. Let's run the profile. To monitor the status of these mappings, let's head to the monitor service provided by IDMC. As you can see, our mapping execution has started. As you can see, both of our mapping tasks have completed successfully. The internal mapping, which converts the EDI file into an EDI XML, has completed, and post that, the CDI mapping, which is triggered through Cloud B2B, got triggered, and that has processed successfully as well. Let's have a look at the event within the B2B gateway. As you can see that we have successfully processed this file. You can drill down and look at the document number, the transaction control number, the event IDs associated with this. Now let's look at the out output file that got generated. As you can see, the input file got consumed by B2B Gateway and has been removed from our source directory. As per our design, we had configured to write the output file within the same directory, and you can see the success.xml and error.xml got generated. Since there were no errors reported, there are, there's nothing within the error.xml file. And if you look at the success.xml, we can see that an order 05 idoc XML has been generated. Now you can use this idoc XML to load that data into SAP through SAP IDOC Writer Transformation. That wraps up our demo. You can refer to the following documentation, which is provided by IICS for any other questions. We'd love to hear your feedback on these videos. Feel free to reach out using the links below. Thank you.